Hi everybody, this is Jonathan Fowler and in this tutorial I'm going to be using Photoshop and Motion to show you how to create um, what's called the Kid Stays in the Picture Effect by many. Um, I've also heard it called the Pan and Scan 3D Effect, but more often than not it's called the Kid That Stays in the Picture Effect and it's called that because of the documentary of that name. Definitely check out the documentary, it's a biography of a producer Robert Evans. Basically what they do in the documentary is they use extensively an effect where you take a still image, you cut out individual elements of the still, separate them, and when you animate that it gives the impression of depth and a uh, three-dimensional effect. If you're not familiar with this effect, um, just by my explanation, I'm sure when you see it um, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. It's been used in commercials and feature films, um, and obviously it lends itself well to documentary films where there's going to be a lot of still images um, that are going to be on screen, and it's just a way to jazz up your uh, those stills. This is a photo I took in Burma in, the, in a mountainous village in the northeast of Burma, and I want to use this um, in my video, and it's a 720p project, and what I really want to do is highlight these three people, this boy, this girl, and this baby. Um, and for the for this demonstration, what I want to do is separate my still image into three different sections. I want a foreground, which is going to be these three guys, a midground, which are these folks here, and then a background, which is going to be all this stuff here. In order to get started, what we need to do first is make our foreground a new layer. So what I'm going to do is select the pen tool, and you can hit P to do that. So what I'm going to do is go through, and you want to be really precise with this, and just start keying out these people. Okay, so I have created a path around my foreground element here. And what I want to do is convert that into a selection. So with the pen tool selected, I right click and go to make selection and I don't want that feathered at all um, I do want an anti-alias so okay and now I have a selection of my foreground element and I want to make that a new layer so go to layer new layer via cut and we want to label this layer foreground because this will be our foreground um, and you can see it's cut out pretty nicely. Um, you do really want to be precise with this. Our next step is to essentially do the same thing with what's going to be our midground element, which is we've decided are these people over here. So again, pen tool selected, and we just start keying these guys out. Okay, so I've made a path around our midground element and I want to turn that into its own layer. So I right click with the pen tool selected and go to make selection. And I don't want any feathering in that like before. And then now that that's selected and I, we're on the background layer, what I want to do is go to layer, new, layer, be a cut, just as before. And there you see it made, it's calling it layer one. We want to call that Midground. One thing I should mention is I did use the pen tool to create a path and then turn that into selection. Um, you can really make your selections any way you want using whatever method you want. The magic wand. Um, um, it really just depends on what you're working on. I like to use the pen tool. Okay, so what we want to do now is modify the background layer. And what we're trying to accomplish um, Go ahead and get rid of our of our elements that we've cut out. What we're trying to accomplish is filling in these the edges so that when we get this into motion and we um, start toying around with the perspective, there's not dead space. And the most obvious way to do that is using the clone tool or the rubber stamp tool. Um, so make my selection, go around, and let's say let's see this roof I might want to extend a little so I might do something like that um, and get creative with it um, there's a person here that is 
probably not going to work, so we can get rid of her, unfortunately. And again, the edges are the most important part. Um, as you get more into the center, the less and less likely you're going to um, have that visible in your composition once you animate it. Okay, I have used the clone stamp to clean up the background or to fill in the background. Um, as you can see, I've actually went ahead and uh, filled in everything. Um, you don't have to do that. Uh, chances are that anything in this area or actually any of these areas are probably not going to get exposed um, unless you really do a dramatic move. Um, like I said, the important parts um, to really pay attention to are the edges. Um, so you want to be more accurate um, in those spaces um, because those will show up as you um, animate the composition in motion. So we've done the hard stuff. All we have to do is save our file. So save as. We want to make sure that we're saving it as a Photoshop file and I'm going to save it as a uh, motion demo. Again, make sure Photoshop is selected and you definitely want to make sure that you're preserving your layers. Um, alpha channels, go ahead and have that selected as well. Embed color profile, sure, and save. Okay, so I have opened up a motion project so that we can animate our PSD file. And the first thing we need to do is to get our PSD file into our composition window. If you just drag and drop, it's not going to preserve our layers. What you do is you hover over the composition and I'm still holding down the mouse button, go to import all layers and release the mouse button. And there you go. Now we have the layers preserved and you can see just like we did in Photoshop, um, everything is preserved. Um, it actually made this a subgroup. I don't want it that way, so I'm just going to drag this above there. And these are two empty groups, basically. Let's delete those just to get them out of the way. 